What's up everybody, Blaze the Hedgehog here, and I just want to make this really quick video. Uh, let me fix this. Okay. So, um... Grey Goo. You know, the Let's Play and everything. Uh, I really want to like this game, and I did like it at first, but it's just like... The more and more I play it... The more I start to see, like, what is wrong with this game. When this game was first introduced to us, we were thinking, you know, this is going to be, you know, finally, after all these years and after having to deal with EA's bullcrap. Yeah, I know this game isn't made by EA, but we're finally going to get a game. Even though it's not Command & Conquer, it's going to feel like Command & Conquer. At first, it did feel like Command and Conquer, but just really, a lot. It was. It felt like a Command and Conquer game, but like slower paced, and like it felt like there was kind of like a lot of freedom with how you built your base with with you know like the beta, and the goo felt like you know kind of like a how like a nod player would play they'd be sneaky and doing guerrilla attacks on you and stuff like that but it's just like the more and more you play it the more imperfect it gets and it's it's just not a good RTS game like it was going to turn out to be and in the beginning people were saying you know everything's pretty much fine, it's just, you know, some things need to be balanced, or, you know, the game needs, the gameplay needs to be quicker, because, <sighs> multiplayer, I didn't really play any multiplayer matches with people, because I was trying to, you know, learn the game, and, you know, so I wouldn't just run in and suck, but, it's so slow that it's just it's just not fun because it's just boring because of how slow it is and the multiplayer isn't the slowest part of the game but to me the slowest part of the game is the campaign now the cutscenes and everything are just amazing and the story to me just seems you know like it so far, it just seems like, you know, you don't really know what's going on. It like It's kind of immersive and everything. But it's just like when I get into the missions, it's just so... Like, there's nothing fun about them. I have more fun right now playing the first Command & Conquer missions. And that should say something, because the only way to even beat most of those missions... You have to sit there and build a wall and block yourself in and then amass tanks. And I'm having more fun doing that than I am playing the missions of this game. And I thought it was just me not really liking the game at first. You know, well, not at first, but, you know, I was liking it at first. And then the more and more I played it, I just started thinking, like, God, this game really is, is not what Command & Conquer feels like anymore. And then when Yuri's Revenge got support from CNC Net, and they finally released it. And I started playing Yuri's Revenge, and I, I started playing all the old Command & Conquers again while I was doing this playthrough, and I was just like, this game just is not anything like Command & Conquer like I thought it was. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I... And it's just not fun, and that's why I have not made another video for the let's play of it I just I just can't play the game and have fun I, I just can't the missions are just boring and that's why I'm so quiet during the campaign it's just I'm trying to concentrate on you know doing stuff but at the same time like everything's just so slow and it's so slow to get anything done. It takes so long, and it's so tedious, and it just makes it, you know, it's okay if a if a mission is challenging and everything. There's nothing wrong with having a challenging mission, and there's nothing wrong that, with a mission that might take a while to beat, you know. 
These missions are easy though on this game, and it, it. But they're just so like barren and bland. There's no real objective. I mean, it's pretty much just like. I mean, at least in the first Command and Conquer, there was some objective, even though you had to kill all of the forces on the map, anyways. But on here, it's just like. I don't know. I, I just don't know how to say it exactly. It, it, but the game is just. boring. It's just bland. The gameplay is bland. There's no real strategy or nothing. Like, you just amass units. You don't even have to worry about really taking up that much. I mean, I think the only reason you'd have to tech up is to get an epic unit. Everything else, you can just get the small stuff and attack with. And it just... It just doesn't seem fun. But, apparently I'm not the only one that feels this way. When this game first came out, and people started playing this game, like, like, playing it religiously, people were playing this game religiously when it came out, everybody was, they loved it, and the review was overwhelmingly positive. Now it says mostly positive, which is, I guess, okay until we scroll down, but the more helpful reviews are... This game is literally already dying. Because people just... Like... They just can't keep playing the game. In the state it's in. And there's... Oh, I, don't, I just don't know what to say. You just have to see it for yourself. But now we're going to see how the reviews have changed. Because... At first... The only complaints... Even though they were still good reviews, like they were thumbs up reviews, the only complaints were like the performance of the game isn't so great. Even on like fantastic hardware, the game just runs poorly. And <clears throat> uh, minor complaints like, you know, the game, a little bit more balancing needs to be done, and, you know, there needs to be. Uh, you know, it needs to be faster, you know, not so slow, and, you know. But, here's the reviews now. And this one, I just got through reading this one. This is pretty much just takes the cake. So, I'll read this tweet to you. I don't know if you'll be able to see I'm pretty sure you won't be able to see it, but this is a tweet from well, it's got it right here, actually. It says Grey Goo Developer has entered the posting war. I'm done with this game. The rallying cry of a former poster that if it was truly done would have just quietly just quit quietly without a 1,000 word essay. Game designer on Grey Goo Faction's mechanic balances tuning. So obviously this guy knows a lot about this game since, you know, he's helped make it. And he, you know, pretty much all that stuff that he messes with right there. He just, you know. I haven't seen this one. Let me see what this one says. I think it might be the same thing. Yeah. I haven't read this yet. He claims his account was hacked, but... I don't really know about that. Because people can, like, under so much stress... People don't take only so much stress, and they... they even if it's online, even they, if they post it online without thinking, you know, later on their eyes, like, probably, you're like, crap, I probably shouldn't have said that. So they might, you know, come up with an excuse. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I've, I've heard of developers getting just, like, stressed out over their games because they just hate them anymore. Like, the E.T. game for the, for the Atari, like, 
even the person who made that game, everybody hates that game. That's an awful game. And even the guy who made the game hated it. And it's probably, and he even said if he didn't hate it so much, if he didn't hate working on it so much, it probably would have been better. But he said he just got tired of it. So he just, and that's what became of it, is just a big steaming pile of crap. So this should be good to look at. The game population chart is actually dropping. So let's see. Only a hundred and thirteen players in the last twenty four hours, right here. That's in see last thirty days is in the negatives. That's like that that do you not see 2000 in January 2015 over 2000 players and then now we've only got there's more people playing on CNC net there's more people playing the first command and conquer game red alert one Yuri's revenge and Tiberian Sun than there is playing this game. Uh. And I really want to love this game. I really want to love this game. And oh god, please don't. No, I don't want to. Steam, please. God, how'd I get out of this? Ugh. Okay. Anyways, like I was saying, go away. I guess I'll have to load the thing back up now. Uh, Steam, come on. Why do you suck? And surprisingly, I think it was $50 when it first came out. It's still $50. I don't know why. The, I guess you could say mainstream reviews are still there. Ah. <sighs> But this, this topic, it covers, this guy's review of this game covers everything. And his actual review, actually, what is this? Disconnection between players and developers. Oh, so this is pretty much the developers avoiding the players. You know, pretty much just like, oh, well, you know, pretty much pulling what EA would pull, you know, release a game and, you know, be like, oh, we're open to feedback. We can make the game better and stuff. And then they don't. They just completely ignore all of the, you know, all of the feedback and stuff. And I know there's some feedback that's stupid and people, you know, are like really salty about it and so and I understand avoiding that. But like when you're avoiding feedback about the game, like how it's supposed to play, how it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to be, you know, balancing it and everything, you know, that's not good. And really ever since this game started declining, I haven't heard anything about it. Like it like all the news for this game, all the hop for this game has just hit rock bottom. Like, I never hear about this game anymore. The only reason I'm even making this video is to pretty much just to give my thoughts on the game exactly how it is after I've truly experienced it, like, further and further. Like, when you first start playing it, it seems so good. Like, it seems so refreshing to have a new RTS game that doesn't suck, but the more and more you dwell into it, it just becomes 
retarded. It just sucks. And I mean, I'm sure there's people that may like this game. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you are telling the old Command & Conquer crowd, you know, we're coming out with this game that is going to bring back the feeling of Command & Conquer for you guys. And then you come up, come out with this. After the, the relief of having a new RTS game after freaking years has worn off, there's nothing about this game that's Command & Conquer like it. Except that it's an RTS game. That's it. It's an RTS game. StarCraft is an RTS game. It feels nothing like Command & Conquer. Matter of fact, this don't even feel like StarCraft either. Even with a unit cap. So, what is it? Anyways, since there's just 25 views so far, I thought I would share... This here, it's one of the most hilarious community policies I've ever read. Apparently, the policy applies to all official websites, social networks, forums, and community fan sites. From what I've read, it seems like they are completely clueless about the current state of Grey Goose. Some of the listed offenses are simply ridiculous. By doing things like swearing, AFKing, intentionally disconnecting due to the game's bad network bad networking impl implementation in parentheses trolling in quotations posting toxic remarks in quotations are justified as criticism uh well apparently see in parentheses are justified criti criticism uh considered toxic players are subject to in-game bans Greybox promises to spend significant efforts evaluating each violation on an individual basis. Just how can they possibly be successful in enforcing it is beyond me, but it would not be better to spend this effort to work on the actual game itself. Come to think about it, it's not the player's fault that the game is broken and these disconnect abuses are impossible. It's how hard it is to count disconnects as losses. Which is actually true because when this game first came out, you know, one of my friends got it. And I was like, yeah, we're going to freaking play it and all this. And we're going to play together. We're going to do freaking comp stomps and start getting good at the game. And we couldn't because the game, we only got to play one match together. And ever since then, we just keep disconnecting. This game has dedicated servers, guys. Dedicated servers. And it's disconnecting. That is... I'm not saying every server on this world is perfect. But when you have a game that is supposed to be a triple A title. And it comes out with dedicated servers. There, Those servers should not be having players disconnect. Unless there's something... You know, something... Unexpected happened. You know, and then you fix it. Or if you have to do maintenance on uh, on the server, maybe emergency maintenance that comes up, you know, that would disconnect players. That matter of fact, stuff like that disconnects all the players most of the time. But I've experienced this myself. Like, we could not play together because we just kept disconnecting. And ever since then, I just don't even bother playing with other people because... It, it, I just disconnect. We both disconnect, and it doesn't make any sense. There should be no reason we're disconnecting. You get a, any other AAA title, you can play on any server if it's a dedicated server. You don't have to forward your ports and all that crap. So, pretty much what this guy is saying on this Reddit topic is the fact that they've come up with this guideline that people have to follow, okay, or the, the policy. Um, so if you're, I can understand where this is supposed to go. It's supposed to be like, you know, if you're gonna be a douchebag, 
about this game and you know you're going to be disconnecting because you don't want to lose or to avoid you know avoid a loss or something even though i'm pretty sure if you disconnect it counts as a loss anyway it usually does um on most rts games but and and you know you're being hateful towards the developers and stuff then they're gonna start banning people okay well i think that's a little bit overboard in kind of not really i mean it is in a way like if you're being hateful straight you know straight towards like a developer and stuff i could see where they'd probably ban you not you know temporarily or they'd give you a warning but these are becoming straight up bans on people and they're using this this policy to be like okay well if you have any constructive criticism about the game that we don't like you could get banned and that's not right from the beginning, people have been criticizing this game, not in a bad way. They've been saying this game is really good, but here's what you need to do to make it better. Because right now, even though it's good, it's you know it's pretty. It's not gonna make it. It's not gonna make it. It's just too slow paced. It needs to be balanced because when you play a game for so long and it never gets any balance fixes. Because trust me, I've done that before. You just, you quit the game because it just becomes so annoying that you cannot have fun when you're playing the game. And that's what you're supposed to have when you play a game. You're supposed to have fun. Everything's supposed to feel fair. So this guy's actual review, and I, I'm sorry, I'm probably going to read this whole thing because it's, it's just so spot on about this game. So, the story, decent. The CGI scenes, excellent. The missions themselves, challenging. Which is true, they're, they're challenging, but I still feel that the missions are really slow and they just drag on. And that's why I have not made another video for the playthrough, because it's just so annoying and so boring during every mission. The rest of the game, underwhelming. Low amount of content for the game claiming to be a AAA. Universe at War and Empire at War have, has way more content than Grey Even the graphic settings are underwhelming. Like there is no settings for anti-aliasing, shadows, etc. There are very few maps and the game can only go up to four players. Which also kind of sucks. I don't know why, but it seems like RTS games now are moving to 2v2s. Why? I mean, I can understand why, kind of. I mean, 2v2 and 1v1s are probably the most popular, you know, played. But still, people want to have fun. <laughs> I mean, there, there's people that still play 4v4s sometimes on uh, Tiberium Wars and Kane's Wrath and, you know, stuff like that. But it, why, though? Why do you have to do that? If they want to play 2v2s, they can always play 2v2s. They don't have to have, you know the game made where you can only do 2v2 and that is it no more freaking people heaven forbid maybe you have a group of friends like me that have all the same they all have the same rts game they all just want to get in this big freaking battle with each other you can't do that in this game so the only you know you can only have four friends play with you at the same time and two of you are going to be fighting each other so anyways, let's continue. The lack of map scrolling by holding down one, one of the mouse buttons is disappointing. And that... I, I still cannot get over the mouse scrolling in this game. I hate it. I hate the, the, the mouse scrolling in the game. I hate scrolling in general in this game. It's so annoying. It, it's like the only... It's like the most convenient way in this game is just to use the mini map and drag your mouse around but when you're doing that that takes your mouse away from the action you may have to make a quick decision but then you're down here fiddling with the freaking map trying to scroll around and see what the heck is going on the population there is a population cap which is 
a no for me. Me too. The upgrades are quite bland. And that is true. I think the only upgrade I've even used in this game is the stealth upgrade for the stalkers. Doesn't really change the units. The railgun upgrade for the mammoth tanks in Tiberium Wars. Now that's an upgrade. As for the units, they're just units. They don't have the same amount of character as the units in Command and Conquer. Crazy Alvin, anyone? The soundtrack is pretty nice, but the sound quality is kind of crap. Sound quality for the songs I have is way better than the game's soundtrack. Don't buy the DLC soundtrack because it only has 10 out of the 31 tracks. Do not be fooled by those who said this game is like Command and Conquer. I'm sorry. It's not. If you're going to get this game, wait until the price drops. I only recommend this game if you're in it for the story and the soundtrack, but I'll, I will be looking forward to the continuation of the story. Best RTS game? Not even close. StarCraft Supreme Commander, not including the second one, and Command and Conquer from Tiberian Dawn to Red Alert 3 Uprising will remain at the top. Honorable mentions Warhammer, Universe at War, Empire at War, and Sins of a Solar Empire. Westwood does not equal Petroglyph. Westwood is not back, nor will they ever. When will you silly Westwood fanboys realize that? Such a shame that Petroglyph abandoned animations. It had potential before the dreadful change. Stop getting honey dicked by things like this from Petroglyph. Now, what I've heard, I can't remember who I was talking to about it, but Apparently, most of these people working on this game are not actually from Westwood. There's some of them that are from Westwood, but not as many as we originally thought. So, the people that are from Westwood that were working on this game, you know, and all the people at Petroglyph that were originally from Westwood working on these games they have they have strayed away from the true formula that was built when Dune 2 came out Dune 2 was the RTS formula pretty much it was the first RTS game there was nothing else like it and from there Westwood just kept building on, and even Blizzard, you know, made Warcraft and Starcraft. They used that formula to make good RTS games, and th and they were fun. They were competitive, and they were fun. They didn't have to be, like, competitive and stressful. And their games, like, people love these games so much that even now... When EA tries to kill off Command and Conquer, they can't. Because the Command and Conquer community, like, it's like, okay, well, you're going to shut down the servers for all our old Command and Conquer games. Here's XWIS, here's CNC Net, here's all these mods if you want to have fun with the game. And here's all of this, here's all these editing tools. Here's how to make, you know, your own soundtrack in the game. Here's how to make your own units. Here's how to make pretty much a, a total conversion mod for the game. And then they get, you know, Renegade X. Renegade X started as a as a mod for Unreal Tournament 3. Who would have, you know, thought that, like, you know, Renegade was just amazing. Like, well, you know what would make it better? If we made it modernized. So let's make a mod for Unreal Tournament 3, and it's going to be Renegade. And then it got so much support that now it's a standalone, and it's free to play. And no matter what happens in the Command and Conquer community, or to the Command and Conquer community, I should say, we all just keep going. Command and Conquer is pretty much, well, I don't, I, I don't know why I say pretty much, is community driven. Even if EA or whoever, you know, whatever big game company didn't make another Command & Conquer game. They just said, you know what? Freak it. We're done with Command & Conquer. 
there would still be us, the Command and Conquer community. We would all still be pushing Command and Conquer. We are what make it live. We've always been what makes it live. But it won't die. You just can't kill it. Even if the use the fathers of RTS, even it, even though they have strayed away from the true form of RTS. Even if they live us, we still have us to keep making these even if we have to start making our own Command and Conquer games. We we have still all stayed on the right path. And we know what we want. We don't want this. We do not want this. The next RTS game we want, we want it. If it's not a Command and Conquer game, we want it to feel like a true RTS game. We don't want it to stray away from the from the RTS formula. I guess you could say I'm That's what I've always called it. But yeah, it's just I really loved this game. Loved. Despite its flaws, I really did. But the developers not only ignored the community for months, they've begun actively spitting at the most dedicated fans. Do not buy this game. Do not support any company that treats its fans this way. It's a good game, but $50 for this game is almost a ripoff. Squirmish 2v 2 vs. 2. The hell and the maps, they made the bet that players would make the map for them. Workshop, it's more like working for them and not getting paid, lol. Don't buy this game at $50. It's it's decent, it, or it's not worth it. it, says it doesn't, and doesn't even, is, is even spelled incorrectly. Mm, that's obviously an old one. You have probably heard enough about this game to have doubts. In short, don't buy it. Look up Gregoosh subreddit. In the forums everywhere you'll find this is a half-baked game with game-breaking bugs and balance issues that all of us who coughed up $50 to buy sadly regret. Do not buy this game. And I have not been on the forums to, to see this game, to see like how badly things have declined. And honestly, I was about to start recording this game again, but something just told me to just go to the Steam reviews. Because I felt like that I wasn't the only one that, that just started saying no to this game. And when I got here... I was actually, I was surprised, but not like super surprised because I was expecting for some reason to just everybody, I figured everybody, you know, that had bought the game, you know, when it came out and everything, I was like, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that, that sees that this game is has is not a command and conquer game or anything like it or and it's not fun anymore it's just boring i'm not the only one but i was surprised on like how how much chaos has pretty much happened in such a short amount of time this game just started falling Single cam single player campaign is linear and boring. Game is not op optimized and has a huge and has huge frame drops. You start with 120 plus FPS and drop down to below 25 FPS in, in mid game and below 20 FPS in late game. I have a lot more than decent machine that easily plays Far Cry 4 and other similar games on Ultra. Same here, and I have no idea why I still cannot play this game without lagging. I that's not what was said, that's what I was saying. Therefore, it is easy to conclude that it is not my machine, but a poor optimized game that runs 
that ruins the game experience. Multiplayer is terrible. Very little players play online. Only very few maps and tons of them are not designed for competitive matches. Next to that, they are they are copy pasted from single player campaign. Unit design is flat and boring. There are no cool moves that you can do. Epic units look and sound cool, but are a total MP killer. Uh, that's, you know, population, pretty much. Simply no fun in operating them and or killing them. <clears throat> After three months, the game still does not have replays, which actually now that i remember that this game was supposed to get an update i think in march to have a replay mode was it not wasn't that supposed to happen observer mode or ladder you can view in your browser on top of that disconnecting happens all the time and gives the dc player no loss or ban so that's an so it's automatic Why? You do not automatically ban people. I'm pretty sure everyone can agree on how automatic anything works punishing people. Take a look at YouTube. Heaven forbid if you have somebody whistle an epping song in the background or anything. It's not near as bad as it was, but... You can upload a video and make it private, and if it has one song in it, it knows as soon as it gets uploaded, and it puts a claim on your video. No one's actually claiming a video. It's an effing machine that's programmed to do it. The people may not even care that you used a song in their video. They probably could care less. You simply get away with it and the devs do absolutely nothing about it. Worst part is the developers though. They hate to communicate clearly and all they say is we are working on it. They do not listen to the community and blatant balance issues lingered around for months and flaws and map designs haven't even been touched yet. Even patch breaks another thing and they fail to acknowledge or fix it. Last patch fixed nothing the community wanted. On top of that, the game lags even more due to their fixes. The developers act like they know what they they know what they do, but they have they clearly have no clue. A quote from the Grey Goo game designer on Twitter, and that's pretty much him just being fed up with this game. I honestly wanted this game to be a success, a success, yet the clear lack of honest communication and we know it way better than the community attitude killed this game beyond repair. The game itself is mediocre, is mediocre currently. Might turn decent if they manage to fix the FPS lag issues. I do not recommend you to buy this game. The developers simply do not deserve it. And you can get a... And you can get way better games for your hard-earned money. Or better yet, you can get them for free if you just play with CNCNet. And the the ultimate collection is like $20. So come on. Come on. And it still has a good population of players. Command & Conquer still, in total, the amount of people that are playing Command & Conquer is is good way more than this way more and and the and it's still alive command and conquer is still alive because it has so many people playing it and there may not be a thousand players on one of the games but out of total all of the games and all the people that are playing the games there's plenty of people And I think the only time I ever have trouble getting in a match is on Renegade X when it's like really late at night and you know everybody goes to bed. But that's kind of always been a thing with Renegade. Even the original Renegade, it was the same way. You know, every, it gets really late. Everybody just you know gets off the game, and goes to bed. You wake up and you play during the day, and you might have to go to another server because there's 40 out of 40 people on that one. Multiplayer is a joke. Lags big time. Never had this issue with StarCraft 2. 
You know, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge RTS fan. Played every Warcraft, Red Alert, CNC you can think of, and this is just blah. It's it isn't interesting. It isn't difficult. It feels like an introduction to RTS games for children before they play the decade old StarCraft. This game is behind StarCraft 2 somehow. I cannot believe I allowed good reviews to convince me this was good. And I did have a good review on this game at first, but I actually removed it and changed it to a negative because that's when I just started seeing how bad this game was becoming. Unprofessional developers. Cons. Horrendous lag on four player maps. Unbalanced unit. Short campaign. Unpatched multiplayer ladder disconnection. Disconnect exploit. Three months with only one attempt at balancing. Dead community. Pros. Music. Petroglyph is a crumbling husk of what we once knew as Westwood. This is this was supposed to be their triumphant return, but the game and the developers have fallen far short. I think you get the picture. And I'm this this video's gone on long enough, but I just can't play this game anymore, guys. I just can't. I can't play online. I'm not gonna be making any maps for it anymore, that is. I've only made one. But it's just this game is just dying. And this should go to show that developers of games is not what keeps games alive. Command and Conquer has pretty much been abandoned by any sort of like actual develop, you know, a develop a game company. And EA, I haven't even seen anything about EA talking about a new Command and Conquer yet. It's like they don't even care. What would we know they don't care? It's freaking EA. They don't care. But they know if they wanted a team to make a good Command and Conquer game, they know that they could do it. And they know that they could probably have one done by the end of this year and it'd be good. But they don't even talk about it. Ever since they ever since they've cancelled Generals 2 or Command and Conquer free to play. Which I don't even think they announced it publicly themselves. They made the developers announce it. Ever since then they've just, you know, they haven't they haven't said anything about it. And that just makes me think that they're just through with it. Like they just don't care. They don't care enough to, you know, they'll be like, oh well, you know, you got this whole community that runs the game. So just let them do it. Which, that's fine with me because obviously the community has been doing a hell of a lot better than they ever did. But yeah, I'm sorry for all the venting. But I just had to get it off my chest. I just, I can't continue the playthrough on that game. Nor will I probably ever play this game again unless... There better be some groundbreaking changes for this game to stay alive because as of right now, this game is dead. Unless the developers actually start caring and, and just start fixing stuff. Which, I mean, it's too late now. They have their money. They have their money. They don't care. But they would just have to make some groundbreaking changes and there would have to be people flipping out over this game for me to ever play it again. Because as of right now, it just sucks. And there might be people that like this game. And that's okay. But to the original Command and Conquer fans, the people that played the original Command and Conquer games, and to the people who know who knows what the true RTS formula feels like this is not it. This is just wrong. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you guys 
in the next episode.